Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. In the previous video for those, this two part uh, video that talks about the pilgrimage that the Muslims wanted to perform after the Battle of the Trench, we spoke about how the Muslims decided to go to Mecca after the Battle of the Trench, which was five years, which happened after five years of the immigration of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the Muslims from Mecca to Medina. Uh, as refugees. And we said that the Muslims finally uh, came and arrived to uh, Mecca, uh, in front of Mecca, uh, where the camel of the Prophet, peace be upon him, sat down. Uh, it did not want to move forward uh, because she was commanded by uh, the Divine to sit there for a bigger purpose. So the Muslims camped there uh, per the commandment of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And there was quite a bit of back and forth between the Meccan people and the Muslims because the Meccan people wanted to uh, push the Muslims out and return them back to Medina uh, because they viewed the Muslims entering Mecca as something that would hurt the reputation of uh, the Meccan uh, tribes. Um, we arrived at the, at the point where Uthman ibn Affan, this great companion, it's this great well-established um, companion who has a, a very good lineage and is well-connected and he's from a big tribe and a big family um, and is well-respected by both the Muslims and the non-Muslims, ended up being held in Mecca by the Meccan people after he was sent by the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him to Mecca as a messenger to deliver a certain message. So they held him back and the news went to the Prophet peace be upon him that he was killed. Somehow uh, the, uh, the news traveled from Mecca to Medina that he was uh, killed. He wasn't killed though. So the, Muslim, uh, the, the Prophet peace be upon him uh, uh, became very um, unhappy with this news because when a messenger is killed, a messenger from one nation to another is killed, that is an immediate declaration of war. So what happened is that the messenger, peace be upon him, he called upon the companions that were with him. There were about uh, 1,400 people that came to perform the minor pilgrimage, the Umrah in Mecca. And uh, he, he basically told them like, who will make bay'ah with me? Who will take this oath with me? Um, that, uh, uh, you know, whether we live or we die, uh, we're going to uh, get the revenge of Uthman Affan. And everybody ended up uh, basically giving the Prophet peace be upon him the oath um, and they joined him uh, under a tree um, and that tree uh, is uh, is the place that the Muslims got, gathered and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned in the Quran that he was pleased with the companions as they were giving the oath uh, to the Prophet peace be upon him um, to uh, stand with him in uh, taking revenge uh, for Uthman Affan, uh, may Allah be pleased with him. And uh, during that time, everybody um, gave the Prophet peace be upon him the, the oath and the Prophet peace be upon him took one hand and he uh, pretty much uh, shook his other hand like this, um, like slapped it like this saying, okay, and this is also the bay'ah, this is the oath from Uthman ibn Affan. Um, uh, if he was here, but he wasn't uh, there. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave the oath of Uthman uh, on his behalf. And um, as they were uh, sitting there um, and they were preparing to uh, to attack, uh, they discovered that Uthman Affan uh, did not die. Um, and the Meccan people decided to release him uh, to avoid any sort of conflict. And he went to the Prophet, peace be upon him. At the same time, the Meccan people sent some messengers. Uh, they sent some messengers uh, to the Prophet peace be upon him to have a treaty drafted, some sort of a treaty. They just wanted the Muslims and the messenger to be gone and to go back to Medina and not enter Mecca this specific year. So um, uh, they sent uh, somebody called Suhail ibn Amr. Uh, Suhail uh, was a, uh, came to the Prophet peace be upon him and he had few terms uh, f uh, that were provided by uh, the Meccan people. And they were pretty tough terms. Uh, so he sat uh, with the Prophet, peace be upon him, and uh, it was a long story. They, you know, he, he mentioned all his terms and the Prophet, peace be upon him, accepted the, uh, the terms. Uh, one of the terms is that the Muslims are not going to enter Mecca this year. Uh, they can come next year. The second term that they agreed on is that there is truce. There is no more war between the Meccan people and the Muslims for 10 years. This truce is going to last for 10 years. 
another very oppressive and very aggressive term was that if somebody from Mecca goes uh, and leaves Mecca as a Muslim and, 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 and goes to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the Meccan people are not happy with that, that the Prophet would return him. This was a pretty, sh pretty shocking term for the Muslims, but the Prophet agreed with it. And they, they also said that if somebody from the Muslims decides to betray, betray the Muslims and go to Mecca, the Meccan people don't have to return him to the messenger. And the Prophet said, that's fine, uh, you can have that. And when they came to write uh, the, uh, this treaty, even so, some of the biggest companions, they had their doubt, like Umar ibn al-Khattab. Uh, who was the second caliphate, who was actually known to be Al-Furqan. He is the divider. He was given the name or the nickname of the divider between truth and uh, falsehood. He was a very strong man. Um, he has a very interesting story also with Islam. We can mention it, mention it in another episode. But he went to Abu Bakr, and Abu Bakr was the best friend of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he was the first caliphate after the Prophet, peace be upon him. So Umar tells Abu Bakr, aren't... Isn't Muhammad the, the messenger of God? And Abu Bakr says, yes. And Umar al-Khattab says, aren't we, the Muslims, uh, carrying the truth? And Abu Bakr says, yeah. And Umar al-Khattab is saying then, why are we basically taking the lower, uh, the shorter end of the stick here? Like, why are we giving up the uh, all this... Um, considering that the Prophet, Muhammad peace be upon him, is a true Prophet and that we are on the truth. And Abu Bakr tells him, uh, look Umar, um, stay, stick with the Prophet. I believe that he is the Prophet of God and he knows what um, he's doing. So Umar al-Khattab, obviously being the passionate man he is, um, he goes to the Prophet and he repeats the same exact questions. And the Prophet peace be upon him, he says, uh, you know, I swear by God that I am the messenger of God and that uh, what I'm doing is I'm doing uh, in, with the commandment of, uh, of the divine. And Umar al-Khattab, you know, he has nothing to say. He's still not happy though, but he, there's nothing for him to say. So, Abu, so the Prophet, peace be upon him, calls Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib is the fourth caliphate after the, or became the fourth caliphate after the Prophet, peace be upon him, passed on. And he tells him, okay, right. Um, and he tells him, you know, هَذَا مَا عَهَدَ عَلَيْهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ uh, Muhammad Rasulullah هذا ما عهد عليه سهيل بن عمر. and he's like basically this is the uh, the treaty that the Prophet of Allah the Messenger of Allah Muhammad peace be upon him has agreed with um, or agreed to with Suhail ibn Amr and Suhail ibn Amr just jumps up and he says he says you know if I if I knew you the Messenger of uh, of God I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be sitting here you know creating this treaty. Uh, remove that and just put your name. So the Prophet is upon him told Ali, you know, just remove it and say Muhammad ibn Abdullah, uh, Muhammad the son of Abdullah. And uh, also they started the uh, the treaty with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of God, the generally merciful, the specifically uh, merciful. And so Hayd ibn Amr jumps up and he's like, um, he's like, I we don't know that. Like, what is ar-Rahman? What is ar-Rahim? Like what's what are these terms? Just write Bismik Allahumma, like in the name of uh, you, our Lord. And the Prophet says, write that. That's fine. And after they're they're done that treaty, and the moment the you know both of them sign it, guess who comes? The person who comes from Mecca, declaring his Islam, is the son of Suhail ibn Amr, Abu Jandal, the son of the person who's negotiating with the Prophet, peace be upon him. Pretty tough situation. So he managed, he manages to, he, he managed to run away from Mecca and, uh, you know, he was already uh, not in a good situation because they, they didn't want him to be a, uh, to, to become a Muslim. Um, they probably have tortured him. They, he has, uh, he's been like, you know, all the cuffs in his hands and he's just running to the Prophet, peace be upon him. And then the moment he arrives there, uh, his father, Suhail ibn Amr, he takes him and he hits him. And um, and Abu Jandal tells the Prophet, like, are you returning me to, to them? And then they will uh, basically, you know, force me to leave this religion. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, he says, um, Abu Jandal, uh, go with them. 
uh, Allah Almighty will make an exit for you, but we are not people that will basically break this treaty. Like we, once we give our oath, once we give our uh, our word, we're not gonna uh, break it. So go with them. And that really shocked the Muslims. But Abu Jandal had nothing to do, so he went uh, with them. And um, after he uh, uh, he went with them, uh, he remained in uh, in Mecca, and um, um, and uh, and basically the uh, there are some a uh, few other incidences that uh, that happened. Uh, the Muslims um, themselves uh, they were in an in in an extreme shock uh, at that time. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, once he was done with this, he gives the commandment to everyone, go sacrifice your, uh, your sheep, um, your sacrifice, basically. That's part of the uh, rituals of Umrah that are right now mostly forgotten. Uh, but it is actually one of the sunnah, one of the uh, prophetic traditions uh, when somebody performs Umrah is that they, um, they can bring with them a hedi, they can bring with them a sacrifice from them uh, from their uh, city and then they can sacrifice it and they have to distribute the meat uh, inside uh, Mecca so imagine here right now the Muslims were promised to enter Mecca and perform pilgrimage because that was what the Prophet peace be upon him saw and now they're not entering it on top of that all these aggressive terms that they have uh, they had to agree to um, that the Prophet just agreed with uh, for a bigger vision that they didn't understand. And they have to sacrifice right now these sheep and they cannot take their meat. They have to give the meat to the people in Mecca, those people that have been oppressing the Muslims. This was pretty shocking. What happened at that moment was a basically a public mutiny. Uh, the Muslims did not listen to the commandment of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And this was the very first time where the whole community basically joins hand in uh, disobeying the Prophet, peace be upon him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, is uh, surprised. And uh, he just goes to his uh, his wife, Um Salama, and he tells her, this is what's happening. And Um Salama tells him, uh, O Prophet of Allah, let me, uh, like, let me tell you something, and it's up to you if you want to do it. Just leave the house. Don't talk to any of them. Sacrifice uh, your, or slaughter your sacrifice and uh, call upon your barber and just shave your head. And he did that. The Prophet walked out and he did exactly what his wife uh, guided him to do. And the moment he did that, uh, the shock on uh, that was on the faces of the Muslims, on the whole community, it just evaporated. And then they realized how bad they have been in disobeying the Prophet, peace be upon him. And they went and they did exactly what the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, did. And then they went uh, back to, uh, to Medina and the messenger, peace be upon him, he told them that I saw in a dream that we're going to perform pilgrimage. I didn't see that we're going to do it this year. I just saw that we are actually circling um, the Kaaba, this, this sacred house. Um, but it's going to happen next year, according to the treaty. So there was no promise that's going to happen this year. And the moment they returned to Medina, this was a, a, an amazing political victory. Because now the, the whole of the Arabian Peninsula, they realize that they have the freedom to join the, the, the community of the Prophet peace be upon him or join the community of Quraysh, the Meccan people. And there are, there, there, there are no repercussions to their decision. And then the, all of a sudden, so many tribes that were afraid uh, of joining the Muslims because of this propaganda that the Meccan people were doing and the wars and whatever, they just joined the, the messenger, peace be upon him, and they accepted Islam. And, you know, the Muslims then realized, they're like, oh, this is definitely very visionary. This treaty that the Prophet, peace be upon him, signed is very visionary. It's beyond what we have imagined. And, you know, as the story continued, another man uh, from uh, Mecca, came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, accepting Islam. And Meccan people sent behind him two of, of their people, and they asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, they said, you know, return him upon us. There's a treaty between us. And the Prophet told him, I have to return you. 
uh, we are not going to break the oath that's between us. And he left with them, but he did not accept. He was a, he was a fighter. He did not accept to be taken back. So he managed to draw a sword uh, from uh, one of them. He killed that one, uh, one person and then he ran away. The other person, you know, just sprinted to Mecca and he told the, uh, the people that. And uh, this guy went to the Prophet, peace be upon him, with his sword. And he said, look, Prophet of Allah, you have fulfilled your, your, your part of the treaty. I have freed myself. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, um, basically, uh, like, you know, uh, told him, like, you cannot stay in Medina. So he decided to go and um, camp between Mecca and Medina. And that was a very interesting thing because the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave him uh, or said a word. He said, this man could, could start a war, like, because of how strong he was. Uh, he just needed men around him. And what this man understood is that, oh, so I, I, I cannot stay in Medina. I have to go somewhere. And then this word of the Prophet, peace be upon him, spread around uh, Mecca. So the people like Abu Jandal, uh, who was the son of the negotiator, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he left and he joined that man. And then 70 other people who were Muslims, but they were keeping their Islam secret, they went and joined him. And they basically were interrupting every single um, caravan that the Meccan people had. So much so that the Meccan people, they went to the Prophet peace be upon him and they told him, just take them. Uh, we don't want that, uh, that term in the treaty anymore. Uh, just take him. We drop that term. Uh, keep, uh, keep him with you. Now, at that moment, the Prophet peace be upon him have written to, uh, to this man uh, and to the people that were around him. And they told, uh, he told them, come to Medina, you're safe. Unfortunately, that man, uh, he read the letter of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and then he put it on his heart because he was dying. He was on his deathbed and he died. Uh, although his biggest dream was to sit with the Prophet, peace be upon him, but he couldn't because he was wounded um, in one of these conflicts that, uh, that happened between the Meccan people and uh, the group of these uh, 70 uh, Muslims. Uh, the rest of them, they, uh, they went back to the Prophet, peace be upon him, Abu Jandal, um, and the rest of the 70 people, uh, they joined uh, the Muslim community. Now, this uh, story uh, that happened uh, allowed the Muslims to, uh, to basically have the freedom of speech uh, in the Arabian Peninsula. The issue that the Muslims had with the Meccan people and the non-Muslims is that they were not allowed, the non-Muslims were not allowing them to speak. The problem was not the problem of war, it wasn't the problem of, um, of swords and resources or whatever, it was a problem of freedom of thought. And that treaty basically settled that, which means anybody right now can think whatever they want and they can accept whatever ideology, whatever faith that they choose to. And this was a huge, huge advancement in the Arabian Peninsula. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and inshallah, I will see you in the next episode and we'll talk about uh, what happened next. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.